He suffered a lot, but God blessed Joseph. God blessed Joseph and stayed, he took Joseph in stages. And Joseph was mightily blessed by God. So, young people, return to God. The Lord will bless you. And he will use you in this final hour that we're living in. The Lord can use you for his, for his glory and honor. All those friends that you have that are so wicked and evil, that have corrupted you, you will be able now, once you return to God, you will be able now to win over your friends to the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is good to be with you today on Shekinah. I pray that you had a great week, you and your families, and um, we're going to come in agreement for the program today. Before we start the program, I would like to wish Pastor Gary, which is my son, happy birthday. And um, Pastor Gary, I wish you all the best. You're a very good child, and I thank God for you. I Thank God for the um, hard work. I just give God praise and thanks for you. May God richly bless you, Pastor Gary, and continue to, to bless you with his presence and his anointing, the grace and the strength in Jesus' name. Praise God. God bless you. We're going to pray now for the program. Mighty God, in Jesus' mighty name, today I praise you and I thank you. I thank you, blessed Holy Spirit, that you will now have your way. Mighty God, without the Holy Spirit, I stand here useless. I am asking you, please, Lord, to anoint me another time, because without the anointing, I can't do it. I pray, God, for the divine unction and divine utterance, and I pray for the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit in a powerful way. This word, as it go forth, will not return void, but it will accomplish that which you purpose it for. And we ask God in Jesus' mighty name, mighty God, that you will bless your people, all who have tuned in to this program today. Bless them, bless their families, bless their homes. Those in those homes that are not saved, today we claim salvation for each and every one in those homes in Jesus' mighty name. May the good Lord bless and guide and protect your people. And we thank you again for the word of God today. Father God, today this, this program is especially directed, mighty God, to young people who were in the church. <clears throat> they have grown up in the church. But God, the devil has caused them to go astray from the Lord. But we're trusting you just like how the, the prodigal son came back because he wandered off. And my God, we know you can do the same for our young people. I thank you for the dream that you have given to me that has pointed to this message today. And we're trusting you that every young person, not only the young ones, many, many have been in church and have left. Because why? They think they're of age and they can live for the world. But God, I'm just trusting that the Holy Ghost will do his work. And we believe by faith that our young people, there's a revival that's coming and we're trusting that many of them will be revived and they will return to God with their whole hearts. Mighty God, it's very heart-rending. Today I thank you for the dream and as I share this dream before I start to share the word, I just pray, God, that many of them will be stirred up to serve God again. Why? You're coming soon. You're right at the door. 
the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is right at the door. And Lord, we don't want our young people to be left behind. I'm asking you, dear God, to help, help our parents. There are many single mothers out there struggling with their young people to get them to serve God. They're struggling, mighty God, in Jesus' mighty name, because many, many out there, dear God, many, many of their children are out there living for the devil. But we pray, God, that you will help our parents to know and understand they have, they have failed you because they have compromised their standards in so many ways. Mighty God, that all the children have gone astray. There is no rules. There is no standards. Mighty God, parents have become fearful to correct their children lest they get the cuss word and, and lest they get, mighty God, a good cuss out. In Jesus' mighty name, they're afraid. They fear that the kids will leave home and but God, I pray that our parents will understand the revelation you give for Mother's Day is that they have birthed their children in the natural and they have to birth them in the spirit. And may they understand, mighty God, their position now as parents to get their kids together and to set their house in order. Today I praise you and I thank you that our young people I just pray that the Holy Spirit will use this message to reach them because many, many, many of them, mighty God, according to that dream, are drinking from broken cisterns, are drinking, dear God, from a fountain, mighty God, that is so polluted. And I pray, God, that they will go to the fountain of life and drink the water of life Mighty God, who on, on, only comes from you. Mighty God, you're our living fountain. And in Jesus' mighty name, I just praise you and thank you. And as I share this dream, I pray that our young people will be stirred up. In Jesus' name, amen. I had a dream very recently. And the dream was, I was drawing water from a fountain. And I had this little picture, picture that, um, that I was, you know, the, the water was coming, it was flowing in this picture. And um, as I was drawing this water, it was so, so unclean. It wasn't pure. The water was so, so dirty. <clears throat> and I'm going to tell you the colors of this water. The water was very green. It was very, very thick. It had a lot of a brown looking thing inside. Like it was not just green, it was also brownish and also grayish, but more so green. And the water was so, so, so dirty. Very, very, very. I do not have words to describe to you how dirty this water was. And as I was drawing this water, I look at it very carefully. And as soon as I woke up from the dream, I said, Lord, why this type of water is coming from this fountain? The Lord said to me, Jean, the young people are drinking from this water. The young people who was once in church that I say from their, from when they're very from when they were very, very young. And the Lord said to me, Jean, they are drinking from a fountain that's producing this water. They're drinking from broken cisterns. They have hewn, hewn out for themselves broken cisterns, and that's the type of water they're drinking. That's the type of water they're drinking because they're living in the world. Now, I'm going to, when I get a dream, it has to line up with scripture. So I would like to take you to this word right now. If my dreams do not line up with scripture, 
I do not receive those dreams. And I'm going to take you to the word of God now. Jeremiah, we'll go to Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13. Hear what the word of God says. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed, hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. Now, if you were to uh, dissect this one verse, we know that, yes, um, this, this word here has been directed to Israel, to, to the Israelites. And Jeremiah, um, Jeremiah was a great, great man of God. And though it's directed to the Israelites and so forth, we know we're spiritual Israelites, and this word is also directed to us today. The word of God is for today. It never can change. It was for then, it's for now, and it will forever be. The word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This devil is a liar. And I would like you to know that our young people are drinking from fountains that is producing this type of water. They, they, have, they have committed, like the Bible says, two evil. They have forsaken the fountain of the living God. And they are drinking from cisterns that they have hewn for themselves that does not produce wholesome and healthy spiritual food. Pra praise God. They have gone back to the world. They have left God. They walk out from the church. They forgot what God, how God has brought them up from, from when they were very, very young in the church. Many, many young people all over this world, they are in a mess. Because why? They are drinking from fountains that are not healthy. And when you forsake God, th this is what happens. You always settle for far less. Once you walk away from God, you settle for far less. And we know that the answer to every problem is only found in the Word of God. And this devil has, you know, has done a, a, a good job with, with when, it, when it comes to our children. I'm not praising Satan, but he has done his bit when it comes to our kids. The modern church, you know, has by large forsaken you know, the word of God. And they have turned to humanistic psychology and, and all these things. And if you want to say, if I want to say this plainly, I can honest, honestly say they have turned to broken cistern. They are drinking from water that is so polluted. They are drinking from the devil's fountain of our young people. When they should be on fire for God, they walk out. They turn their backs on God. But the devil is a liar. And in the name of Jesus, we're believing by faith that, that that polluted water that our children are drinking from, that polluted stuff, in Jesus' mighty name, parents, I'm going to tell you, take a hold of your children in the spirit. And if you don't take a hold of your children in the spirit, you will answer to God. Because God gave the word. You brought them forth in the natural, and you have to bring them forth in the spirit. You have to bring them to that place where they can have their spiritual birth. And not only have their spiritual birth, but you will also have to help them out to the end. Because many, many of them, you have failed. Parents, you yourself have been living in sins that is so, 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 so dirty and ugly. You, you live in... You live in pornography, you live in adultery, you know, parents are, are on dope, parents are, are, you know, they are looking at all kinds of X-rated stuff. 
you name it. Parents are, you know, they're drinking, they have their beers, they gamble, and, you know, they have ungodly friends, and, and you can't bring up your children like that because if you are going to bring up your children and you yourself, you know, can't correct them because why? You don't have the life to correct them. You now got to straighten your life out. You got to get your act together, and you have to help your children now and birth them in the spirit. You have parents that, you know, mothers and fathers give their children the okay to, to go with gay friends and, and to mix with friends that are drinking and smoking and, and they're carrying on and they go to party, they go, they lie. Young people, they tell lies. They're going to friends and they go and they party. You name it, they do it. But here, God is saying our young people are drinking this, this, this type of polluted water. That is why many, many of them are in the mess they are in. Many, many of them are, are contemplating suicide. Many of them have committed suicide already, and, and they're gone straight to hell. Many, many of them, because why? They have friends that's influencing them the wrong way, but the devil is a liar. Parents, I urge you in Jesus' mighty name, get your act together. The children want an example to follow. And parents, if your brain is polluted, the children will be polluted because you have no standards and all you do is compromise. You got to get your act together and you got to now be able to live that pure life so that you can do intercession Deep lamentation, get into deep lamentation for your boys and your girls and bring them forth in the spirit. Parents have become lazy. They have, they have their set ways and parents don't want to, to, to serve God the way that they used to. Like they've grown weary, they've grown tired, they're blaming God, they're blaming God for everything. But listen, you blame yourself. I always blame Parents, so you got to get it right if you're going to enforce, if you're going to enforce rules in your house, you first got to get clean. This is not about telling your children, listen, don't do what I do, but do what I tell you to do. No, you are wrong. You are wrong. You got to get it right. Young people, I appeal to you. Get back to God and quickly. Stop drinking from fountains that are producing polluted waters. All right? You cannot drink from the fountain that you're drinking from now and think that you are going to come forth. It's not going to happen. You will get just like the prodigal son. He went among swines and he started to eat swine food. That's what you're eating. When you are living for the devil... That's what you're eating, swine food. And if you eat swine food, you can't be healthy. If you're eating, you know, all kind of, if, if you're dabbling with, with sin and, and you're, you're living that polluted life, that's what you're taking in. Now, I'm going to tell you something that's very profound and you listen carefully. All right? What you feed, it will grow. What you feed, it will grow. I'll repeat that. What you feed, it will grow. A healthy brain, a healthy mind will bring forth healthy stuff. If your brain is polluted, all right, if your mind is polluted, you will bring forth polluted stuff. Now, you think that every time you hear that Jesus is coming, this thing is a joke. It's not a joke. This thing is for real, all right? You have to stop drinking from fountains that are polluted. What do you mean, Pastor Jean? What I, what I mean is check your friends out, all right? If you're going to hang out with friends and all they know is cuss, they know to cuss, and all they drink, they smoke, they carry on, they have no life, they have no kind of high morals, they, they, you know, all they do, they, they live a very low life. You know what our teenagers like today? Not only teenagers, you know, those in their 20s and 30s, they're still young. 
So all, I'm going to call all of them young people. All they like is to get dressed, and they like lots of money. They will work hard. I mean, they will work, some of them, some of them will work very hard. As soon as they get their money, it's dope and friends and clothes. They'll buy shoes for $400. They'll buy clothes, you know, you know shirt and, and pants, and, and, you know, they dress up, and it costs hundreds of dollars, all right? This, this is what the young people like, but the devil is a liar. He's a liar. And young people, the sooner you realize that in Jesus' mighty name, that your soul, this day, your soul is required of you. The sooner you realize that your soul is required of you, right now, it's better for you. Because what is going to, what is going to, what's going to happen is, you can end up dying last and going to hell. And that is not a place for you. Hell, you think that hell is this, where we live now is hell? You don't want to see the real hell. Hell is hot. It's torture day and night. And you have no hope in hell. Once you go to hell, that's your end. It's over. Once you go to hell, you have torture, you have punishment, you have torment. That's another life that begins there. You think you're tortured here and you have torment here? No. But everything, you will see what hell, how, how hot hell is. Why would you want to go there? You have tasted and you have seen how God has been good to you. Right? You have tasted. Not to say you haven't. You have. And we can, I can take you there right now. Let us go to Hebrews. Let us go to Hebrews. Praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 6, from 4 to 6. For it is impossible, Hebrews 6, from 4 to 6. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away, to renew them, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to open shame. Now, you have tasted, you have seen the goodness of God. You know that, you know, you know young, young people, you were in church, you speak in tongues, you had the anointing, you have revelation from God, God visited you, you had dreams, you had visions. And now you have chosen to throw, to throw God aside and just walk in the lust of your flesh. And you, you allow your friends, your, your, your friends to influence you. And they are turning you from your God. And they are turning, they are turning you to their God, which is the devil. They are serving the devil. And this is the friends that you are following. What are you going to say to God? All right? Now, I am going, I'm going to go now to a story which you have heard time and time again. We are going to go to Genesis 39. Genesis 39, and we're going to go from verse 1. And it's jo Joseph's story. You have heard it time and time again. Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, and Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down hither, thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him. And he made him overseer over his house and all that he had put into his hand. Now, I would like you to see here the story about Joseph. Joseph was sold to the Ishmaelites, okay? His father was Joseph, and there were 11 of them. Joseph had many, many dreams from God. God visited Joseph, and because Joseph was chosen, is chosen by God, you know, by, uh, through all these dreams and everything, 
he knew, he knew that he's chosen, from, he's chosen by God. So the family, they envied him. His brothers envied him. So what they did, to make a long story short, they put him in a pit, all right? And in that pit that they put him in, they, they, Joseph was sold now to the Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites bought him from the pit, all right? Now I want you to see here, Young people, listen to me carefully. Boys and girls, listen to me carefully. And you older folks too, who have been in the church and now you're serving the devil. Listen to me carefully. All right? They, they, brought, they brought Joseph, these Ishmaelites. All right? They bought him. And they sold him to Potiphar. Praise God. They bought him. And of course, Potiphar brought, they, 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 they brought him to Potiphar. And Potiphar brought brought him also from the Ishmaelites. And he paid a lot of money for Joseph. I'd like you to see Joseph was a man of God, right? He was about 17 years old, I guess, here. Uh, he, between 17 and 20, very young, all right? And you can see here that when you're serving God, and listen to this, the blessing of the Lord, and you're going to see what God has done with Joseph's life, how he prospered and blessed him. And J Joseph went from the pit to the palace. From the pit to the palace. All right? Now, young people, where you are right now, you are in the pit of hell. Backslidden. All right? Backslidden. When rebellion to its highest. You cuss your parents out. You disrespect them. You tell them you're going out with friends. And you're going out to have, to, to, to do your own thing. The lies, the wickedness. Some of you want to beat up. You want to fight with your parents. And you literally, you literally would hate your parents. I would love to take you to the word of God in Proverbs to show you what will happen to you. When you see, you do your parents all of those things. All right? Now, the Bible teaches us to honor our mothers and fathers. Yes, parents are very wrong for, for living that compromising life with their children. But may I also say that if your parents, you know, if your parents ask you for forgiveness, that they didn't take a stand with you and they, they didn't take a stand bringing you up and they compromise and all these things. If they say sorry, you now have to listen to your parents. As long as your parents are examples to you, you have to listen to them. If they're not examples to you, I can understand. But if your parents are shining examples, you have to listen to them or else you will answer to God. All right? And God's judgment will be sure to hit you. Praise God. Today you go out there and randomly they shoot. They come out from all corners, from cars. They come out from lonely streets and they shoot. They, they just kill randomly. That's what you want? If you're one of those to die when those bullets are going wild, you gone straight to hell, right? That's what you want? Hell is hot. It's eternal, eternal, eternal punishment. You think that you have it good here. You think that you, you, know, you can live it up and this is a life for you and you call that good. You have become so blind when you walk away from God. You're calling evil good and good evil. You can't even discern what is good and evil anymore. But there is a God and you will have to answer to him. Joseph was serving God. He got promotion from the pit to the palace. Joseph went through a lot. And you young people, get your Bible and read about Joseph. And you will see how much Joseph went through. He suffered a lot. He suffered a lot, but God blessed Joseph. God blessed Joseph. And stay, he took Joseph in stages and Joseph was mightily blessed by God. So, young people, 
return to God. The Lord will bless you and he will use you in this final hour that we're living in. The Lord can use you for his, for his glory and honor. All those friends that you have that are so wicked and evil that have corrupted you, you will be able now, once you return to God, you will be able now to win over your friends to the Lord. That will make the devil real angry. But you can do it because you have to win them. But you have to get right first. You, can't, you just can't be like them and think that you're going to produce anything fruitful. No, no, no. If you're like them, if you're with them, you're going to gonna become like them. Praise God. So the Bible says, Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him and made him overseer. Potiphar made Joseph overseer of his house. Verse 5, and it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. Can you imagine that God blessed Potiphar's house? God blessed everything that Potiphar had just because Joseph was a man of God. Joseph served God, and God blessed him. Praise God. Potiphar was so pleased with Joseph, and he noticed the hand of God on Joseph, and he knew that he is blessed because of Joseph. Praise God. God can use you young people, and he can use you mightily in this final hour. Let's go. We're in verse 6. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he knew not aught he had saved the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. Jo Joseph was a goodly man. He was peace. He had peace. He had joy. He had divine favor. He was, Joseph was very handsome. Joseph had integrity. Joseph had high morals. And you will see that in a while. Let's go. Verse 7. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph. And she said, lie with me. Now here is Potiphar's wife. All right? Potiphar's wife, she saw God what was with Joseph. They saw everything. Joseph is the reason why she and her husband were so blessed. And everything they had was, you know, they were all blessed because of Joseph. Now guess what this wicked woman, this is really a woman sent by Satan. That is what the devil does, right? He would, he would choose somebody that will come your way and he will corrupt and that devil will use that person to corrupt you. Listen, keep your head on. Don't, don't bring yourself so low. That is wicked and that is evil. This woman have her husband and she wants to sleep with Joseph. Now, we're going to go now to verse 8. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master, trust me with all that is in the house, and he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither has he kept back anything from me but you, because you're his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Now listen to the story. All right? Joseph, young people, listen. If you say no to sin, and if you say no to your friends, you're afraid they're going to call you chicken. Now, you, will be caught, you, you are a chicken because you know why? You have walked out from God's way. You have walked out from the blessings of the Lord and gone to feed on Satan's stuff. Feed and fountains that do not produce healthy, healthy, healthy stuff. You're, you're, you're drinking from a fountain that has corrupted you. You're drinking from a fountain, the world. You're drinking from the worldly cistern that has, that is, that has corrupted you. 
and you remember what you feed, all right, will grow. And that's where you're at right now. You have fed, you have been feeding yourself from the devil's, you know, from the devil's party, the devil's company, the devil's, the devil's everything, the devil's, what should I say? You're feeding yourself with, from, with, with stuff that, that is not profitable. You're feeding yourself with stuff that are sending you to hell. What can dope do for you? It will corrupt every brain cell. It will make you so, so weird. It will cause you to be mentally, you will just be weird then, just weird all the time. You look, you look at yourself in a mirror. You're feeding yourself with dope. Now you tell me, don't you see? That's what you're using to get energy. That's what you're using to make you high. Why don't you get high in Christ? Why don't you get high in the Holy Spirit? Praise God. That is a good fountain to drink from. From the Spirit's fountain. From Jesus' fountain. You drink from Satan's fountain. You are intoxicated with the world. Praise God. Here is a shining example of a young man who stood up to this woman. Potiphar's wife and say, listen, my, your, your husband, which is my master, had entrusted me with everything in his house. Everything he has entrusted me with. How can I do this wicked thing and sin against God? How can I do such wickedness and sin against God? Praise the Lord. Joseph is reminding her, in other words, Look how God has been good to me. I was sold as a slave to you guys. Look how God has delivered me from the pit and brought me to the palace. Look how God has blessed me with divine favor. Look how God has blessed me that, my, that the, the master entrusted me with everything. How can I forget God and, and just come and, and sleep with you in a bed? which is of the devil. The devil has sent you. And you want me to corrupt my life with you. But I am not going to do it. Young people, if you have some guts, you're going to stand up to the devil. Young people, if you have some guts, you're going to have to tell that devil, listen, you're going to take back your integrity. You're going to take back your life. You're going to take back your respect. You're going to take back everything that this devil has stolen from you. If you have some guts, you're going you're gonna to stop living that life and feeding on swine's food. You're going to stop living that nasty life for the devil whereby you are so corrupted you don't know you don't know your head from your toes you don't know your hand from your head no you're so corrupted you're so confused don't you see where you're heading so joseph recognized he said god in other words that's what he was saying to her your husband has entrusted me with everything but what joseph means god has been so good to him how can, he, how can he forget the goodness of God and go lay down with this woman? And he's saying, how can I do such a wicked thing against God? How can I sin against God? You young girls, you're selling yourself cheap. You're going to sleep with other girls. You are living that life of an abomination. That lifestyle is an abomination to, to God. You have become gay. What that will do to you, it will send you to hell unless you repent. You guys are the same thing. You young people are the same thing. You are living it up. And you think that you, you know, you are so, you are so macho. And you think that, you know, yeah, that is so cool. Listen, there's nothing about hell that is cool. Hell is, a, hell is misery. Hell is constant torture and torment. There's nothing cool about hell. 
You say, well, oh, Joseph ran away. What's cool about that? That's, that's a man of God with guts. He ran from the devil. You say, well, I'm running from no devil. I'm going to serve the devil. Well, serve him and, and then hell is your portion. What are you going to do? And you, once you see you are in that place where you are serving Satan, you have ruined your whole life. If you were thinking about a career, or pursuing one. Trust me, you ain't got none now. There's nothing that you have. All right? You say, well, oh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm in university and you know, I, I have this and I have that. Yeah, but you don't have God. That's why you don't have anything. If you don't have God, you have nothing. If you don't have character, you have nothing. You young girls, you go sleep here and sleep there and sleep all over the place. You don't think how you're going to get disease, you're going to get sick. You're not thinking about those things. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. This Bible teaches there's a way that, is seem, that seems right unto a man, but in the end or thereof is death. You're so corrupted that you don't know right from wrong. It's so cool to sell yourself so cheap, like, a, like some basement sale. What's wrong with you? You are a girl child. Why don't you get and serve God? Why don't you get and learn to cook and clean and wash and, and, and wash, your, 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 your wash your clothes and keep a, a good home? Why don't you get and serve God? Get with your career, get with your studies, whatever, and serve God and pray for a godly husband. You're going to fling yourself here and there? You young men doing the same thing. Lay down all over the place with all kinds of people. You smoke your dope and you get high and you feel good. And you think you're so cool. Yeah. You're going to see how, what hell is if hell is cool. That's where you're sending yourself. Joseph did it and you can do it if you want. Young man, young woman. Joseph did it, and you can do it if you want. The devil is a liar. Take back your character. Don't sell yourself cheap. Verse 10. And it came to pass as she spoke to Joseph day by day that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. Day by day. This young man, what about, just about 17, going through all this stuff. Day by day, she's attacking him. And he's standing up. Because why? He has God. He has the Spirit of God in him. Think about where you were, young man and young woman. How you had the presence of God. Think about how far you could have been with God. And you have thrown yourself right in the devil's hand. And what he's doing with you, he's bidding for you every single day. And before you know it, he's going to turn. And he's either going to kill you if you don't turn to God. He's either going to kill you and you end up in hell. Or you turn to God and have repentance that you can make heaven. Where is your brains? Are you thinking? The Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. Day by day, she's attacking Joseph. Day by day. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none of the men of the house there within. In other words, none of the servants were around. And Joseph was in the house doing his work. And she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. 
And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was, and was fled forth, that she called unto the men of her house. Now listen, listen to this. She caught him by the garment, trying to pull him into bed. That's the devil himself that was with, with this woman. She's just wicked and just evil. If you open to yourself to Satan, Satan will come in. If you open yourself to the devil. But God was with Joseph. And Joseph ran for his life. Call him chicken if you want. But that's a man of God with guts. He don't grieve the Holy Spirit. He didn't grieve God. God was proud of Joseph that he stood up with, in, uh, with integrity, faced that woman head on. He ran for his life and he refused to go to bed with her. You got all these men, you young, you young women, you got all these, you, you know, you, you young men sleeping here, sleeping there. You think that, oh, yeah, you're so cool, eh? What's wrong with you? Run for your life from the devil. Let them call you chicken. That's okay. To be called chicken for Jesus, it's okay. That's integrity. That's a wise, wise man. 14. And she called unto the men of her house and spoke unto them, saying, See, he brought in an Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. It came to pass, when he heard that I lifted my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. And she laid up his garment by her until his Lord came home. Look at that. She's accusing Joseph now with all her servants. She's saying to them, you see, he came in, that is she saying, her husband brought in an Hebrew to mock her. Do you see how this devil is a liar? He is the one, the devil, Satan, mocking God and blaming Joseph that he mocking her and accusing him that he came in to, to, to go to bed with her. Accuse him, turning the whole story around to let it look bad on Joseph. But in the end, her husband will find out who Joseph is. How he was a man of God with guts. The devil is a liar. And she spoke unto him according to these words saying, The Hebrew servant which you have brought unto us came in unto me to mock me and it came to pass as I lifted my voice and cried that he left his garment with me and fled out. 19. It came to pass with, when his master heard the words of his wife when she spoke unto him saying after this manner did your servant to me and that his anger was kindled and Joseph master took him and put him into the prison a place where the king's prisoners were bound and he was there in the prison but the Lord was with Joseph but the Lord was with Joseph once you see your heart is pure God will always be with you if your heart is corrupt and nasty you're drinking from that fountain that is producing corruption you're drinking from a fountain where you can never ever satisfy your thirst every time you see you take more dope you want more every time you see you drink more you want more every time you see you go with your lay down with some whore you want more whores that's your life praise the lord that's your life. You can satisfy yourself with those things. It's not going to work. How can God be with you? But Joseph stood up for righteousness. Joseph stood up for who he is. For who he is. A man of God. And the Bible says, though she accused him and she told her husband all the lies, he put Joseph in prison. Just listen what it's saying. And the Lord was with Joseph. 
The Lord will be with those who have a pure heart. All the time. You serve God out of a pure heart, God will see you through. And he will, he will, cause, his, he will cause all your enemies that come up against you. You know, bring them under heavy judgment. Praise God. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners who were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the door of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it prosper. The Lord will always prosper somebody who is paying a price, who is paying a price, and live with a, serve God out of a pure heart. You know, God will always honor that. But if you bring shame and disgrace and reproach to the Lord, you know, you think about what your end will be. Now, if you were to continue to read the story, how Joseph was in prison, he, will give, he was given high responsibility in the prison. God was with him in the prison. And you will see a lot of things, how much Joseph went through and how God brought him through and how God blessed him. Young man, young woman, return to God so you can have the blessing of the Lord. Young woman, take back your character. Don't live like a young whore. Where are you going to get a husband if that's your lifestyle? You're throwing yourself all over the place. Men taking advantage of you. That's what you want. You drink, you get drunk. Men taking advantage of you. They're doing all kinds of stuff. Young man, why don't you get on fire like Joseph for God and take back what the devil has stolen from you? Are you going to choose to go to hell? Eternal punishment? That's where you want to go? Praise God. Be a Joseph. Be a Joseph. Praise the Lord. Now we're going to go now to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy 4.12. Listen what it says. 1 Timothy 4.12 Let no man despise your youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in meaning your lifestyle, in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Return to God, young man. Return to God, young woman. Praise God. And be an example to other young people that are coming up in the church. Jesus is coming soon. Young people, look at their conversation. They play all kinds. They go and get involved with all kinds of demonic games that is corrupting their brains. Looking at porn, corrupting your brain. What you feed, it will grow. Why don't you feed on God's word and grow in the spirit? But we have forgotten God's word. We have forgotten where we came from. You let the devil using you, let the devil corrupting your brain have you, you know, have you walking like a zombie on this earth. Because why? Sin. Despise not your youth. Be a Joseph. Praise the Lord. Let's go now to 1, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy 4, 8 and 12. Well, we just read 12. So let's go to 8. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, 
having pr promise of life that now is and of that which is to come. Godliness. Godliness. Body exercise, bodily exercise profit little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. Godliness is always profitable. Stop living for the devil and clean up your life. Let's go to 1 Timothy 5.6. 1 Timothy 5.6. But she who lives in pleasure is dead while she liveth. That goes for men, young men, young man too. If you live in pleasure, boys and girls, listen. If you live in pleasure, you're dead while you're alive. That's what I was saying just now. You're like a zombie. You're dead while you're alive. Why? You're dead spiritually. And to be dead spiritually is the worst thing. In, in this is the worst thing you can ever think about in life. Because when you're dead spiritually, you have no hope of heaven. None. Praise God. Let's go to 2 Timothy 2. 2 Timothy 2. And we'll go from verse 19. 2 Timothy 2. Sorry. 1 to 13. I'm reading. Thou, thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The things you have heard of me among my witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. You therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man who wars and tangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him, that you may please God who has chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, Yet he is not crowned, except he strive lawfully. The husband, man who labors, must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, of the seed of David, was raised from the dead, according to my gospel, wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore, I enjoy all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we believe not, yet he abides faithful. He cannot deny himself. God wants you to be a soldier. He wants you to be a soldier. What a soldier does, right? A good soldier, a natural soldier. What? They are in war. They fight. And they don't fight stupid. If you're a soldier of God, you need to use wisdom. You need to get your act together. And you need to know what is right and what is wrong. Listen what the Bible teaches us. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians. Sorry. We're going to go to the book of Corinthians right now. And I want to show you something. The book of Corinthians. Let's go to... Let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, chapter 6, 14 to 18. Listen, young men and young women. By pureness, by knowledge, by long-suffering, by kindness by the Holy Spirit, by love and faith, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true. Praise God. As unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, and so forth. Let's go to, to from verse 40 now. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. 
For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what concord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has he who believes with an infidel? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and be, with, be their God. And they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and you be separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. I will receive you and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons, and you shall be my daughters, said the Lord Almighty. Come out. Come out from among the world. Separate yourself. You can't dabble with the unclean stuff. You can't be dabbling with sin. Come out. Separate yourself from your ungodly friends. You say, well, I can't have friends. Yes. But you can't, you can't do what your friends are doing. You have to be different. You can't mix and meddle with them. All right? You just have to come out from among them and separate yourself. You are in the world, but you are not of the world. Praise God. And God is saying, when you live that separated life, that sanctified life for the Lord, God is saying, you will be his son and you're going to be his daughters. Praise God. You got to make up your mind that you're going to come clean. Praise God. All right? Come out from among them. You are not called to blend in. You are called to stand out. All right? Young people, you're not called to blend in. You're called to stand out. Young, young people, be leaders and not followers. Be the head, the Bible says, and not the tail. You're supposed to be a leader and not a follower. You got to get it right with God. And you have to get it right quickly. I would like to entitle this message today. Young men and young women, be a Joseph. You say, well, I'm a young woman. I, I'm a woman. I can't be a Joseph. Be a spiritual Joseph. Young woman, be a spiritual Joseph. Young man, be a Joseph. Very simple. Be a Joseph. Run for your life. Psalm 119. And I'm going to close in a while. Psalm 119. Listen what it says. Psalm 119, listen carefully, from verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to your word. With my whole heart have I sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. That's what you have to do, young man and young woman. Get in the word. This word is what's going to keep you. Without this word, you cannot stand on your own. This is God's word. Hide the word in your heart so that you will not sin against God. This word got to be in you, not here, here. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in your precepts and have respect unto your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes and I will not forget your word. The psalmist is saying, I will have a respect unto your ways. Young man, young woman, cleanse your way. Cleanse your ways. Go to God. Cry out from the depths of your heart that you have, you have done everything under the sun that is wrong. And come back to God. There is a way back. The prodigal son came back from eating the swine's food. Pig's food he was feeding on. You know the green stuff that I talk about? That all is Satan's stuff. 
Come back to God. Drink from the fountain of Jesus Christ, not from the fountain of the devil. Get back to God. There is a way back. Jesus loves you. But you got to make the decision to come back to God. Let us pray. Pray after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I have been brought up in the church from since I was a little child. And Lord, I have turned my back on you. Instead of being a Joseph, I have turned my back on you. And the devil called me, and instead of running, I went right into Satan's hand. The devil has corrupted me. The devil has done everything he can with me. And Lord, I come to you today and I fully surrender. I cannot go to hell, and I do not want to go to hell. And I pray, God, that you will have mercy on me. And please forgive me of all my sins. I do repent, Lord. I repent. I repent. I have really messed up. But God, I give you my mess today because out of this mess, Lord, I will have a message. Out of all the tests that I went through, I will have a testimony. Mighty God, you're a loving God. And help me now to clean up and have mercy on my soul. And Lord, I'm coming back to you now. And in the name of Jesus, I went out full. And I'm coming back empty. And I know, God, you will fill me with God. You will flood my entire being with Jesus. That is what I want. I want to get back to you. I want to serve you. I want to help all my friends to get to know God. But I have to clean up now. So God, I surrender all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God richly bless you and I love you.